It's finally time for me to face the future of vintage computer storage. There's much assembly required. We got a nice, nice sticker that says Bruce Guzzi. Yeah, so they're not a standard socket. Sponsors of this video are PCBWay. They provide PCB prototype fabrication from as little as $5. They also have a huge library of shared projects, and if you're not confident with a soldering iron, you can get them to assemble them for you. PCBWay also have CNC machining and 3D printing services. All of this is available at PCBWay.com. Thanks PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I think I can do it using Turn pin wire wrap headers, just have to trim them off on the bottom. So we need to cut these at 40 pin. This is the SCSI drive out of my Amiga. So this is a nice bit of spinning rust that is causing me some huge thermal problems. It's hot! Damn hot! As much as I love the sound of this drive and hearing it click in its spinning rusty way, it's not ideal because it does kick out a lot of heat. And inside an Amiga, it was never designed for the temperatures this appears to want to run at. Fool, what is hot? I told you again! Were you born on the sun? It's a 73 gigabyte drive, so I had to find a 128 gig SD card. And the aim here is to use Blue Scuzzy in its initiator mode to image this drive. To do that, we're going to need some power. So I've got this hooked up to my tandem adapter, which has the nice handy on off switch on it. And we're going to use that to power up the Scuzzy drive. Try and get this oh, neatly arranged. Oh. <laughs> Put these two on the same Scuzzy bus. The first thing I've done is gone down and downloaded the latest version of the Blue Scuzzy firmware connected to PC. What I need to do is hold down the button. I need to put it onto the Pi Pico. I do that just by simply dragging and dropping it. As soon as it's copied it, that will cause the Pico to restart. So we need to create a blue SCSI ini file. One eternity later. Well, for some strange reason, I managed to miss off the Terminator jumper and the other initiator jumper. Oh, well, that's all right then. After adding these two, I could actually set the board up properly.
by taking one of my existing configurations that mimics my Amiga 2000. I can simply remove the existing drives and add in the freshly created image making sure it's read-only, of course. Ejecting the floppy disk. And then quickly saving this configuration before we start the emulation. Well that's a success, so why not try this out next? <laughs> 